everybody, my name is Brian Hofsummer, and I am teaching class this semester. So welcome, welcome to the class on spiritual disciplines. Uh, I miss all of you so very much. Pandemic's been hard, uh, but we have technology, we have YouTube, we have wonderful phones that create wonderful videos. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to all of your comments, all of your engagement, and all of your participation. Uh, I hope you get a lot out of this, and so I know I'm getting a lot out of it just teaching it. So. Um, this is going to be our spiritual disciplines class. It is going to be a 13 week class and every single week we will do a review of experiences. I will give you spiritual practices for you to try and for you to practice and for you to give me feedback and give us feedback. Um, every week we will be doing some instructions, new things to learn, as well as a new spiritual uh, experience or a new spiritual exercise that I can give you for you to learn and try out for yourself. Um, please, I would ask you, one of the things that's going to make this class just amazing is if you can share with us, try things out, do your best, share with us. Uh, go ahead and make comments on YouTube. That's always wonderful. Uh, you can text me at my number. My number is 402-708-2348. Um, or you can email me at brianhoffsummer at gmail.com. I will be reading some of the comments, especially some of the really good comments. Uh, that you text and leave me through email, and I really encourage you to share as we go along. Uh, so you might ask us before we get started, you know, why discipline yourself? Why do all of this exercise? What is this deal about spiritual disciplines? Um, well, let me answer this. I mean, uh, human beings need something to aim at, and one of the things that the Bible is very clear about is, is a couple concepts, one in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament. Uh, this first one, this is this is a Hebrew word. This is the word shalom. Uh, you may remember shalom. Shalom is a pretty popular word. It's it means hello and goodbye. It's it's sort of a greeting and a departure saying that the that the Hebrew people still use. Um, it means health and wholeness. You know, it, it's a wish to be healthy and whole and complete. Um, it also means peace and harmony. Um, and, and in this context, it's a peace, not meaning an absence of conflict, but it means the presence of, of harmony, the presence of something, something good, good relationships. Um, in, the, in the New Testament, we have another word. Uh, this word is teleos. This word means a variety of things. My favorite translation being uh, completeness. Uh, in the NIV, it's usually translated as perfect. Now, that is not my favorite translation. Uh, and you'll see in, here in a second, um, but it means something like complete, lacking nothing, mature, having reached its end. Uh, three of the scriptures that I think are very helpful is Matthew 5, 48. Um, this is a wonderful passage that concludes the entire Beatitudes, the first major section of the uh, Sermon on the Mount. And after going through the Beatitudes, after giving such great instruction, Jesus ends and says, therefore, be complete as your heavenly Father is complete. Now, the NIV does translate that word, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. But the way our ears hear that is, I must get 100%. And you know, and I know that's not going to happen. Uh, we are not perfect as human beings. Um, but, but when you say something like, I'm not perfect, nobody's perfect, you know, great. <laughs> you know, everybody knows that. That's such a common statement that it, barely means anything, but when you say, I am not complete, that means something very different to me. When you say, I am not complete, that means there's still things that I'm lacking. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, Matthew 19, 21 um, has another beautiful passage. Um, this is the from the parable of the rich young ruler, and he's asking, you know, you know, I keep the commandments, I keep the rules, I'm nice to my neighbors. And he asked Jesus, what do you, what do I need to do to enter the kingdom of heaven? And he says, go and sell all of your possessions, all of your possessions to the poor. And then you will be made complete. If you want to be made complete, you will do that. And of course, he, he walked away in shame. Uh, this tells me it's a heavy indication that completeness is not something you think. It's not laws that you don't break. It's not things that you don't do. It's things that you do. It's things that you do to bring about shalom. It's th things that you do to bring about the kingdom of God on this earth. And in doing so, you become more complete through these practices. Um, finally, uh, we have a famous passage in Romans 
where it talks about not being conformed to the patterns of this world, but being transformed into completeness. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a daily practice, and Paul highlights that several times throughout his writings, that there is a renewing of your mind that needs to happen. There is a, there's a daily practice that needs to take place in, in order to push back sin and in order to gain an increasing amount of peace. Um, spiritual disciplines are spiritual practices in pursuit of completeness. We're never going to reach that. We're never going to reach full completeness. Um, there is only one human being that has ever lived that has reached that, and that is, that is Jesus. It's the reason why he's deserving of worship. Um, but we are in pursuit of completeness. We want to get as close as Jesus as possible, and that will benefit me, that will benefit you, that will benefit your family, it will benefit your congregation, your community. That is our best chance at creating the best community, uh, the best life for us and all of those around us. And so spiritual disciplines is an essential way to get there. Um, part of what I would ask you to do uh, is not just flee from sin. A lot of times uh, people grow up in churches and all they talk about is sin, sin, sin. Great. A lot of things to avoid. A lot of things. Oh, don't do this, don't do that. Well, what should we do in the affirmative? What's going to make us more effective? What's going to make us bear fruit? Can we focus on that? That is, you know, it's great to avoid sin, but let's let's also make sure we are doing something to redeem the world. Um, we want to flee from sin, but we want to run towards completeness. Sin disrupts shalom. It's the first thing that enters the garden. The garden is a picture perfect place where, where God was there in harmony with nature, in harmony with man, and sin is what destroyed it. It entered, it corrupted, and it destroyed. And, and sin, even today, destroys what little harmony and peace that we have, and so we must crush it. But we also must discipline ourselves so that we can order the chaos, so that we can so that we can take what we do have and make it better and make it ordered, just like God did in the beginning when he spoke words out of his mouth and said, let there be light. And he spoke into the chaos. He spoke into the cosmos and created out of nothingness, he created something. And that is the very same thing that we can do as people of God. We can, through our actions, through our words, we can take the chaos that we see, and we can order it, we can make it better in our own little, small, seemingly insignificant way. So I drew a little chart. This is very important. This is just about discipline overall. Uh, one of the things you notice, the plus sign here is positive experiences, good experiences, happiness, joy. These negative experiences are things like effort, you know, strife, things that you have to go through. These are usually painful experiences. And what you've noticed, and the research will bear this out, is that sin is almost always a temporary good experience that you enjoy on the front end, and then the more you do it, the more enjoyment just drops off and limits you and takes away your freedom and takes away all of the good things, all of the opportunities that you might have. But discipline is the true way towards freedom, and it costs you something in the beginning. You don't get something in the beginning. You pay for it up front. But the more you pay for it, and the more you consistently pay for things that pay off, you will find that your opportunities expand, that your happiness and your peace expands, that you are more successful. I think there's no truer statement than the amount of freedom and the amount of happiness that you enjoy on this planet is proportionate to the amount of discipline you're willing to put into it. And so spiritual disciplines uh, are very important, very important. They are a very practical way at getting us from where we are right now to where we'd like to be. And so I have some homework. This is going to be a pretty short class today, but I have some homework because I want you, I want everybody to start thinking about what that looks like. Um, I have three, three things for you today. The first thing would be, I ask you, what does a complete person look like? And don't say Jesus. <laughs> we all know Jesus. Uh, we may have met him in spirit, but we've not met him in person. I want to know who physically who are the people you've actually met on this planet that are the most complete people you've ever met and then uh who is the most complete person you've met and what what do they what do they look like 
What do they sound like? What do they taste like? What do they what do they what do they seem like? You know, what are what are things that I can sense with my five senses that tell me little things about what to aim at? Um, and lastly, um, compare yourself. Compare yourself where you, where you were 10 years ago. Were you a total idiot? Were you messing things up? Were you very foolish? Maybe you were just, just a little bit worse off than you are today. Um, but compare yourself where you were 10 years from now compared to where you are today and ask yourself, have I grown? And in the areas where I exerted discipline, did things get better? And the areas where I neglected or bowed down to the sins of the flesh, did things get worse? And then once again, where do you want to be in 10 years? You know, think about this person that you're thinking about who is the, the one who exemplar, exemplifies completeness the most. You know, how can you become more like that person? Or how can you become this version of yourself that, that's just a little bit better than who you are today? I would ask you that. And draw a line from where you are today to that person 10 years from now that you'd like to be. Uh, 2020 was a hard year and 2021 seems it just seems like a year of renewal um, let's let's build on that momentum and let's build on the grace that God has given us let's build on the collective wisdom that this group can give and I love hearing I would love to hear your feedback I can't wait to hear about some of the stories that we're going to tell each other about some of the um some of the people that you've met that just look so much like Jesus, you can barely tell the difference. I know I've met maybe two or three. And I look forward to your feedback. Uh, God bless you, and I hope to see you next week. Take care.